Quantum tunneling is a fascinating process in which a particle goes through a barrier that it shouldn't be able to cross in seemingly no time, breaking the speed of light limit. Or maybe not. Physicists have argued about just what goes on in quantum tunneling for a century. It seems like the kind of esoteric quantum problem that will never be answered. But just last week, the situation changed. Tunneling is one of these weird things that can happen in the quantum world, but that's totally at odds with our everyday experience. If you hit your head against a wall, it'll either go through or it won't. If your head was a quantum particle, it would always have a chance of it going through. Tunneling can happen whenever you have a quantum particle that faces a barrier which takes energy to overcome. This could be, for example, because a particle is trapped by some kind of attraction force. You could imagine it being gravity, but it could be anything. The particle needs a certain amount of energy to escape that trap. Or so it seems. Because if you take a quantum particle, it can get out of the trap even if it doesn't have the necessary energy. Basically, it takes the energy from nowhere, escapes and then hands the energy back to nowhere so that energy conservation is fulfilled. This sounds crazy, but quantum tunneling is a real and measurable effect. It's what scanning tunneling microscopes are based on and it plays an important role for nuclear fusion where particles face such a barrier. Nuclei are all positively charged, so if one approaches the other, it'll be repelled by the electric force. However, the strong nuclear force is attractive. It only becomes relevant at short distances distances between the nuclei. If you add these forces together, that creates a potential barrier. That nuclei can tunnel through this barrier is why fusion in our sun works. The tunneling effect is not difficult to calculate. You can see here what happens if you take a particle that's localized to a sort of lump initially and then let it hit an energy barrier. This energy barrier which you see here isn't a real wall, it's just some sort of obstacle that takes energy to overcome, like the previously mentioned repulsive force. You can see that if the quantum particle hits the wall, most of it is reflected, but some of it goes through. That's the tunneling. But what's this shape that I've drawn here? This isn't the actual particle, it's the probability to find the particle because that's how quantum mechanics works. So what the mathematics tells us is that any one particle has a certain probability of just going through the wall. The weird thing is now this, if you compare the speed of the particle that goes through the wall with one that never encounters the wall, then it seems like the one which went through the wall will on average be faster because the average is where the bump of this distribution is. If the particle was a quantum of light, then that means it must have been faster than light. This isn't a joke. There have actually been experiments where they measured this or at least it's what they think they measured. You see, the problem is that you can't really tell how long the particle took to travel because you don't know exactly where the particle came from. Maybe the particles that arrived sooner were just the ones that left earlier. Very confusing. Now comes this new paper with a very clever idea. You'll love it. They say, look, the key feature of quantum mechanics is that all particles are also waves. This means, among other things, that they have an internal clock. Because waves wave, they change periodically, like a clock. Now, you can't actually measure this waving for one single particle, but you can measure the difference between two particles. This is how interferometers work. So they say in the paper, what they'll do is to create pairs of atoms that start out being synchronized in their waving, so to speak. Let one run into the wall and the other one past it and then compare the results. That should allow them to figure out what's actually going on. Does the particle kind of jump through the barrier with no time passing? Or do they both move at the same speed, just that one takes the forbidden path, so to speak? They haven't actually done the experiment yet. The paper just explains how it works work. But they say it's feasible with current technology, so hopefully someone will do this experiment in the near future. And this might actually settle a 100 years old debate. 
progress is truly unstoppable. Who knows? Maybe we'll one day actually find out whether it's okay to put pineapple on pizza. If you'd like to learn more about recent scientific developments, I recommend you have a look at Nautilus magazine. Nautilus is a science magazine that keeps you up to date on the most relevant topics that are being discussed today. They frequently have scientists writing for them who will tell you the inside stories. I've written a few contributions for them myself, most recently about John Oppenheim's theory of post-quantum gravity. Nautilus comes with a digital and a print version and it's just a pleasure to read. They really put a lot of effort into writing and the graphic design is top. What I particularly like about Nautilus is that they cover all areas of science, from astronomy to economics, history, neuroscience to philosophy and physics. If you use our custom link joinnautilus.com slash Sabine, you get 15% off your membership subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.